I'm Laura Ingram, and this is The Ingram Angle from Washington tonight. We start with the startling breaking news detailing exactly how Twitter censored the bombshell Hunter Biden laptop story in the run-up to the 2020 presidential election. But first, it's important to remember how this all began. In April of 2019, Hunter Biden dropped off three water-damaged laptops at a Delaware computer shop for repair. So after 90 days, Hunter had still not returned to pick them up. Now, it was then that the owner of that store, John Paul MacIsaac, started searching key terms like Burisma after hearing them during Trump's first impeachment trial. Well, upon finding numerous hits, Isaac contacted an intermediary who in turn contacted the FBI. In November of 2019, the FBI came to his home where he was keeping the laptops and they reportedly made forensic copies but left the devices behind, only returned for them uh, very uh, months later. Now, in 2020, Isaac stopped hearing from the FBI, so he reached out to congressional members who likewise ignored the findings. They remained under wraps until he contacted a lawyer of Rudy Giuliani. In October 2020, details of the hard drive were published by the New York Post. Now, due to the chain of custody of the laptop, the deep state saw a way to spin it. More than 50 former senior intelligence officials, they sent a disputed set of emails from Joe Biden's son, Hunter. They have all the classic earmarks of Russian a disinformation operation. Right-wing media has been focused on Hunter Biden, this laptop uh, that intelligence mm -hmm. officials have warned or is likely Russian disinformation. To say that there's no evidence this hard drive uh, is part of a uh, potentially a Russian disinformation campaign doesn't make any sense to me. Now, despite zero evidence of this, social media companies, Twitter chief among them, moved to stifle this story. They even suspended the New York Post Twitter account. Remember that? Well, the message had gone out. This story was not to see the light of day, and elements that did must be labeled Russian disinformation. Well, tonight, we finally learned the details about how the coordination effort unfolded. And it came in a very interesting manner. Elon Musk gave former Rolling Stone writer Matt Taibbi, currently of Substack, the reins in taking folks through all of this. Taibbi wrote, Twitter in its conception was a brilliant tool for enabling instant mass communication, giving people the power to create and share ideas and information instantly without barriers. In an early conception, Twitter more than lived up to its mission. As time progressed, however, the company was slowly forced to add those barriers. Some of the first tools for controlling speech were designed to combat the likes of spam and financial fraudsters. So how did this ultimately manifest itself? Well, Taibbi, through Musk, writes, this is the bombshell here, by 2020, requests from connected actors to delete tweets were routine. One exec would write to another, more to review from the Biden team. The reply would come back, handled. Wow. Joining me now is Molly Hemingway, Fox News contributor and editor-in-chief at The Federalist, Mike Davis of the Internet Accountability Project. He also clerked for Supreme Court Justice Neil Gorsuch and Charlie Kirk, founder of Turning Point USA. Molly, we've been waiting for this information. Obviously, we're going to learn more and more as time goes on. But what do you make of the evolution from Twitter in its early days to Twitter in the election cycle of 2020, especially in the fall, with the laptop story having been revealed. This social media company changed so much about how we can communicate. It started out as a platform for free speech, free thought, and free debate. What happened in the 2016 election was that former President Donald Trump, then a candidate, was able to bypass the propaganda and hostility of corporate media by using social media to speak directly to the American people. And it worked, and he won election. When that happened, social media companies said they would never let it happen again. They began widespread campaigns of deplatforming, censorship, algorithmic game-playing, and meddling in all of our elections on behalf of their favored Democrat candidates. This really did, I think, the perfect example is this story, where we are learning so much about what Twitter did to suppress 
free speech and debate about the Biden family business and its possible corruption that was in this Biden laptop story. And learning details, we need, to, you know, they're learning who was involved, how much Democrats were involved in suppressing this news that Americans had every right to know before Election Day that was kept from them by these bad actors. Mike, I want to go to you, because as you read what Matt Taibbi is releasing with his substack, number nine, point number nine is that celebrities and unknowns alike could be removed or reviewed at the behest of a political party. OK, then it goes on to say both parties had access to these tools. For instance, in 2020, requests from both the Trump White House and the Biden campaign were received and honored, but the system wasn't balanced. Because Twitter itself, Taibbi goes on to say, was of one political, uh, overwhelmingly of one political orientation. So there were more channels, in other words, to complain about what conservatives were doing or Trump supporters were doing than the other way around. Your reaction tonight, Mike? These big tech platforms have way too much power. They're too big. They're too powerful. And when you have these political actors, including government actors, that can reach out to these big tech platforms and say something is misinformation or disinformation and then gets the information censored and people deplatformed. We have serious problems. We have a First Amendment problem with this, but we just have a general problem where these big tech platforms can throw elections. And if the American people would have known what was on that laptop, that laptop from Hill that the New York Post got censored over, President Biden would not be in the White House today. Well, Charlie, that's the rub, is it not? Because we know for a fact uh, that a lot of Americans have reported that they would have reconsidered their vote had they known the extent of the Biden family corruption uh, as a result uh, from the Hunter Biden saga. Uh, and now we find out that because of this slant and political orientation, that's point 12 that Taibbi tweeted tonight, um, that, you know, we see that the assessment of uh, current and former high-level high executives was only going one way. So, again, this reveals just how the bias played out in real time during October of 2020. Direct campaign intervention. And, Laura, what bothers, I think, so many Americans is that they thought that they were getting the whole story in the fall of 2020. When Elon Musk bought Twitter, I don't think he quite realized that he was actually buying a Democrat super PAC. You know, this, this puts an entirely different phrasing on the story, or on the idea of kill the story. Now you have this ability, or you had the ability as the Biden campaign, to just make a story disappear. You don't like the Hunter Biden laptop story. You don't like a story that, you know, might be a threat to your political campaign. Just email your friends at Twitter, and it can vanish from the entire landscape. What we are learning is that this was interdepartmental, too. You had the former intelligence officials, 50 of them, sign a letter. You have federal law enforcement. You have Twitter. How far they went and how shaky this is on so many different levels, it will forever question and taint the 2020 election the more we learn about this. And I'm glad Elon Musk has the courage to declassify or to do the equivalent of declassification yeah. and let this be known. Transparency is the answer here. Well, Molly, the, I think another key thing here is that what, what they're saying in the release of these documents is it, it's not, you know, you just can't take their word for it, Taibis or Musk. This is the viewpoint of current, it says multiple current and former high-level execs at Twitter are confirming this. So that's pretty, that's pretty shocking in and of itself, is it not? That's true, and there's also documents, documentary confirmation of this as well. And I love that we're getting this information about the Hunter Biden story. That was a horrible suppression. But it's also important that people understand that this type of suppression of news and information that hurts Democrats was going on for years prior mm. to the 2020 election. This is just one notable example. And when you think about how many votes are affected by this manipulation of information, this disinformation that comes out by pretending that certain information isn't there or that other information is more valuable, um, it, it is 
It has profound consequences, and there needs to be a lot more. I'm so glad we mentioned that the FBI was involved in this. You know, we'd already learned that Mark Zuckerberg, that Facebook officials were met with by FBI officials who were told, who told them to look out for this type of information to suppress it. This is something that the new Republican Congress is going to need to demand answers from for the government officials that were involved. And also, everyone should remember that just because intelligence officials say something does not mm. mean you should believe it. In fact, I would say, given their track record, you should almost disbelieve it. Yeah, and Mike, that's uh, that applies, I think, to these rosy assessments of the war in Ukraine, uh, COVID, uh, all the things that have, have led people to take very uh, drastic actions in their own personal lives and support various efforts around the world that, uh, that the Biden administration is pushing. I want to go to point 18 in this uh, flurry of tweets that Matt Taibbi set out at the, uh, at the uh, behest of Elon Musk tonight. Twitter took extraordinary steps to suppress the story, removing links and posting warnings that it may be, quote, unsafe. They even blocked its transmission via direct message, a tool hitherto reserved for extreme cases like child pornography. So, so Mike, they were able to stop you from communicating with your, your trusted friends and colleagues and associates on direct message about, about Hunter Biden? That's how worried they were about this? Wow. Yeah. The New York Post Unbelievable. Is the, the New York Post is the old, one of the oldest newspapers in America, yes. and they were able to shut down the New York Post over this. This shows that big tech has too much power. They have gatekeeping power. Ridiculous. Yeah, exactly. We need to break up big tech. They have way too much power, and we have seen over and over that they're, they're willing to use their power to crush conservatives and others with whom they disagree. Well, and Charlie, this leads us to discuss the House now, which is, of course, going to be in Republican hands. Kevin McCarthy will likely be the Speaker of the House. Uh, he has been known to be more friendly in the past than others uh, to big tech. He received enormous amount of money over the years from big tech companies. I mean, we, we like Kevin McCarthy. We've had him on the show many times. But this is where the rubber meets the you-know-what road here. I don't care who gave you contributions. This must stop. This is, these are proxy censors for the left right now. Yes. And this has to stop because it's going on, as Molly said, across the board on, on all these big tech companies. We need a Church and Pike committee equivalent immediately out of the gates in January. I want to see Jack Dorsey subpoenaed. I want to see Eggerwald subpoenaed. And I want to have them answer under oath exactly why did they use the instruments of power for what was supposed to be the public square during an election to benefit a candidate? I mean, were any laws broken here? Did they knowingly do this, even though they knew that the story was false? Why did they do this? Was there another reason? Was there a kind of a quid pro quo that Twitter was not going to be broken up by a Section 230 if Biden got in the White House and they would just kind of turn a blind eye? These are questions that need answers immediately. And then there needs to be some form of justice to this, because everything that Americans will teach their children about fair play and following the rules was obliterated by the alleged public square, which was Twitter during the fall of 2020. And unfortunately, Laura, they got their way. We know how voters would have voted if this story would have allowed to have virality. And let this be known, th this right there was the stoppage of the transmission of what could have been the end of the Biden campaign. And just tragically, the censors and the bad guys were able to squeak through. Yeah, there I mean, be uh, who, do who doesn't think that this had a significant effect, Molly, on the election when in some states things were fairly close and obviously all the concerns about irregularities and so forth the idea that this would have had no impact or minimal impact we right. don't know that we don't know well, that at all i have to mention i wrote a book called rigged how the right. media big tech and democrats seized our elections and this was a big part of it you're absolutely right that it was a close election it came down to three states 40,000 votes. The idea that this doesn't manage to affect, and not just this story, but so many stories, the algorithmic game playing that Google does, where it suppresses news and information from, a public, from Republicans while elevating news and information from Democrats. The, um, there are so many ways in which big tech companies are able to put their, um, put their hand on the scale in favor of their political allies. It affects probably millions of votes. It is an existential threat to the Republican Party, yes, but it's also an ex existential threat to our country. We have seen how these big tech 
social media platforms have been able to create in people this idea that we shouldn't be able to debate or that speech that is unpopular should be suppressed, you know, violently. Instead of believing in the confidence of our First Amendment, that we have the right and um, responsibility to argue for our position, to seek truth, to have freedom of speech, freedom of the press, freedom of assembly, these these platforms are almost more powerful than our government. They frequently are. And so it's a threat to the entire republic, what they're doing. And you see how much the left is freaking out about just one social media platform not doing what they do. And it's not like Elon Musk is helping out Republicans. He's just saying that there should be some more open expression. And he's not even doing a perfect job with it. But just moving in that direction, they are freaking out because they know how much of their political power is thanks to these big tech social media platforms. Yeah, you bet. And this is why they were so uh, upset and freaking out about Elon Musk taking over Twitter. Um, and Charlie, or let's Mike Davis, let's go to you on this. This is uh, tweet 21 of the Matt Taibbi substack on this, or tweet on this, excuse me. Public policy executive Caroline Storm Strom, note regarding Kaylee McEnany, McEnany being locked out of her account, returned the answer that the laptop story had been removed for violation of the company's hacked materials policy. So, Mike, they, uh, they kept her locked out, Kaylee. She was a White House employee at the time. And she, she was, was White... merely, merely discussing, yeah, she, she was top White House communications official, and she's merely talking about something that's true, and they locked her out for that. Wow. It's amazing that, again, this is a good test for Kevin McCarthy. If he actually wants the votes to become speaker, he needs to change his position uh, and support these key bipartisan antitrust reforms to finally break up big tech's gatekeeping power. And, uh, Charlie, this is really important because that poll back in August said that 79 percent of voters think that truthful coverage of the laptop Hunter Biden story would have changed the outcome of the election. So that's 79 percent. Imagine if we had a media that was honest about COVID, that was honest about the true state of our economy, that was honest about Hunter Biden. Charlie, your response. Yeah, it's, it's worse than them not covering the story. They covered it up. That's what's so incredible is that there were active steps to actually use the instruments of power to prevent any sort of virality or discussion. You would lose your Twitter account. You wouldn't be allowed to direct message it. I mean, in, in any way, how is this any different than living in the equivalent of a totalitarian dictatorship when it mm -hmm. comes to elections on the technological landscape? I mean, and I, know that, I know that's a very serious thing to say, but how is it any different? Dissent is not allowed. You come across no. a laptop that is that that has emails and communications tied to the soon to be president or it's it's it is a test. Yeah, for China the Congress. would be proud. Yeah, China would be proud of all of this. We're going to continue to follow all the details tonight. Molly, Mike, Charlie, thank you mm -hmm. so much. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.